Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. I got Brian Forrester here. He just put this video up about the um, second pyramid on the Giza Plateau, Egypt. Now, he's got a group, and they got like 70 people. They got the whole thing to themselves. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> now, he's showing granite blocks and so forth. And I have been talking about all of these things being related to biology. Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in a second, but I'm going to let him show these granite blocks and, and, and show his video for a few seconds, and then I'll kick in with some of my specimens to show what I feel these granite blocks are. So, here you see the granite casing stone on the second pyramid, which is different from the Great Pyramid because the Great Pyramid was completely cased with Tura limestone and there's some anomalies and things that I was able to observe now this is what I, why I like Brian a lot because he looks for anomalies looks for things that they don't make sense why is this the way it is now look at this carefully how homogeneous this stone is now let's go a little further here because again we had the entire Giza Plateau to ourselves for a couple of hours. So here again you can see some sections of the casing stone. And here is our happy group. They look like they have opened, died. Entering inside of the second pyramid. The uh, internal arrangement in terms of um, hallways etc. of the second pyramid are completely different from the Great Pyramid and the same can be said for the third pyramid as well. They look like they're having a great time. That, that would be exciting. You know, to be up close and personal like that, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, and to be able to see these things, I'm not able to go to different places like that, but to be able to, to use this information to further my research, I am very grateful. Look at the joy on their faces. They do seem pretty damn so, happy, Brian. Well, they were inside. I was inspecting, as I said, the exterior. Here you can see two pieces. Now, what I'd want you to look at, too, is this skin that literally, basically, it's not really skin, but it's it's a veneer that that peels off as a layer. Pieces of the granite casing stone still in place. A stranger. Now look at this very carefully. Look at how homogeneous this is. This is red granite. This is the gray granite, which is very similar but it's made from a different biology and they are both made from biology and I believe they were ground up biology metals extracted and then the remnants were turned into um, basically like brick erosion patterns but look how tightly fitting the casing stuff look at the the homogeneous nature of this stone, how it's all the same look look to it. Originally was. Attempts were made to remove all of the casing stone, but luckily in that example those two are still tightly fitting together. Look at the how homogeneous. Now Here they tried to chisel attempt this apart. To break up the case. Look at this very carefully, because I'm going to be showing you stuff in the microscope. We're going to be looking at some other types of quartz in the microscope, and, and, and then I'm going to show you why I believe it's biology. Alright, you saw the red granite at uh, where Brian Forrester was. This is about as close as I can find anything that approximates the red granite. However, there will be different little bits and pieces because of this nucleophilic substitution there there's different little minerals in your body that will take on a different look than the, the surrounding tissues and they are just embedded here and there that is just the nature of the biology that your body's made of now the 
the um, red granite, on the other hand, is virtually perfectly homogenous. It's completely, and red and black like that does not go together normally. Normally they separate from each other because it's black and red blood. This is the colors of blood. That was flesh. I believe it was ground up. They extracted the metals and then used it as, as building materials. Alright, it does look like they were grinding people up. That's a person being ground up by a big grinding wheel, being pushed by this guy. And I believe they built the Great Wall of China out of a lot of extra people, possibly. I have no idea, but that's what I'm seeing. And I can show you the results of a ground up flesh. You see that? Now take your time. Take a couple extra seconds. Look at the chunks. Look at the blocks. Remember that grinding wheel with all his teeth in there, chopping up little pieces of tendon? Tendon is very tough and this white blocky stuff. The red and, and black is blood and it's all mixed together homogeneously. You see that? That's a piece of metal. This is my countertop and I, you know, it's a pretty good sized countertop. There's a lot of it. And basically that's the only piece of metal I could find in the whole, th well, I didn't look at every inch of it, but you know, but look at these blocks. You see that? That That's tendon. I don't care what anybody says. That is tendon. And it's not supposed to be in the middle of a matrix of bloody tissue. It just does not happen. This is ground flesh. And that was a piece of metal that they didn't get extracted out of the counter. Now, I, you know, it's a big counter. It, you know, it runs this way and then that way and then back this way and then island. And, and, and I looked, you know, around and that's about it. Now you got quartz in here, you got tendon, you got blood, you got the, the black blood, you got the red blood, and then you get red quartz which is just had a more, it was in a more red area which I'm going to show you some of the samples I have here and you'll see there's red sections and then there's browner sections and so forth. Alright, this they might call red granite, but you do not have those chunks of tendon. You're never going to find those chunks, those little blocks of tendon side by side. They look like little boards and, you know, and then snapped off. It's just not in there. Now, I also have other things here that are similar, like this is from a lung. And I, I believe that's from a lung too. And they have these different colors built in. They're mostly bloody colors, red and black, because it's blood in a lung. And there's going to be some tissues m mixed in, but not like the tendon. Now, then this you might be, call that red granite too. And that is, I believe, from a, uh, a liver actually. And um, that you can see similar stuff, but you will not find that that same blocky tendinous material just in the middle of of a matrix of of blood it just, it just doesn't happen now this is from a lung and um this has all these little fibers in there and uh, but you see the black and then the red and then there's places here where it's really red well that's that's a lung and that's the same as this and they, these fibers you'll find these fibers in there but they're not like the ones in that um the chunked up ones and the metals in the middle of them. And then you have other ones like this. This is also a lung and it's got this kind of different colored. Here's what's going on. With blood you have all your transition metals. Transition metals are these metals right in here and they give and take and transfer things in your body. When you die, they try to find all your things in your body either rotten, just become mud and so forth, or they attach to something and when they dry out they become solid. And that's the case here. That lung has done that. And the same thing with this goose. And that's the feathers and everything on the goose. And what they do is it's called nucleophilic substitutions. Very new sort of research. So don't don't say, oh, well, let's look it up. Well, you can look up nucleophilic substitution, but they just, within the last year or two, have decided to look at it in a biological context. They always used in the dishes in the laboratories, and they could add a little of this and take a little of that away and substitute and, 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 and invade 
other tissues, but this is what is biology. This is the nucleophilic substitution in biological realm because of catalysts and bacteria and enzymes and all that stuff. So basically new, new, well, very new. Don't forget, this is mine again. There's that piece of metal. But this, when I started looking around, I could, look at that. That's like two little pieces of board. There's some more of them over here. There are more over here. There, there's more over here. These chunks do, you don't get chunks like this accidentally. Those chunks are tendinous straps. Somebody ground all this up and missed that little piece of metal. Now, Brian mentioned Petra. Petra is made of muscle. That is muscle. That is actually the connective tissue. These are the blocks, the striations of muscle. You see them? They're sarcomeres, they call them. And this was carved when this was wet. And that is the banding of the muscle. And if you go inside, you're going to see that it's nothing but flesh. Now, I would, you see, that's all it is. That's, that's connective tissue and flesh and mineralization and the, the fleshy sarcomeres. And this is some blood vessels up in here. That's biology. Now, you know, I love, I understand Brian's position that, you know, he's, he's got to sort of stay within the mainstream. But, I, you know, I do want to comment on all these things. And I'd love to have him look at things with a little bit different of an eye. I mean, he's looking at things right now and pointing out things that nobody else is looking at. And I really, really appreciate that. Let me show you one other thing he showed. Because there are actual creatures inside a lot of these statues. Okay, th this is another thing I really appreciate, Brian, looking into things like this. Very strange weathering. Well, that is a rib cage. That's a rib cage. These are the rib bones. And that is a giant statue. Very, very, it's huge. So there was a creature inside, and the creature was huge. And it was, obviously, it looks like a human. I mean, I'm sure it was the, the, the same thing that they're showing, only... They encased it in a slip of like clay, um, and then I've seen more than just this one. So this is something else that has to be taken into account. Why did they do this kind of stuff?